Good morning, good morning. So what might you be doing?
Well, I mean, I'm a big fan of But still, still trying to get that one more piece. Yeah, I'm going to show you how desperate I am. <laughs> okay, have a great day.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please join in singing our opening hymn 607 in your book. Sing a new song, number 607. From your sleep, your Savior now has come. He has turned your sorrow to joy and filled your soul with song. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be heard from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Sing it hallelujah. And on this new day that we have been gifted with, let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 May the grace, mercy, and love of Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. With your spirit. We sing a new song, but are we the same old person? Meaning, have we made the changes that God wants us to change in our lives? Are we really hitting the max of our potential as men and women and children of faith. Sin says no.
Sin says there's still something going on in this heart of mine, something going on in this mind of mine, something that's part of my relationships or my activities, whatever, that says, uh uh-uh, I'm still the same old person with the same old junk. Let us look for a new me, a new you, as in these moments of silence, we now confess these failings that prevent us from really being renewed and the new person Christ wants us to be and died for us to be. Let us confess. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were sent to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You're seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and then bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us continue in prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, Direct our actions according to your good pleasure, so that in the name of your beloved Son, we may truly abound in good works. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First, the Lord degraded the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, but in the end he was glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed is on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord Lord is my my light light and my my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, whom should I dread? The Lord Lord is is my my light light and my salvation. salvation. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty I believe that I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, to be stealth-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord Lord is is my my light and and my my salvation. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, 
or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. <clears throat> land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother, Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around to all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jesus called him, and he dropped his net. He didn't put it down. He didn't say, excuse me, what did you say? He dropped the net and followed Jesus' call. We have at times in our lives where the thin veil between ourselves and God <clears throat> becomes transparent. You have a moment of clarity a reality where you feel you know what God is calling you to do or what God is asking you to become. But it's only an ask. It is an invitation, an opportunity that is ripe for the picking. It's not a demand, but a gentle nudge in a direction. It's an opportunity we can take advantage of or not. It isn't there forever. God opens a door for a short period of time. At some point in time, the opportunity is gone. They say there's a thin veil or space between us and God. It's a time and place where your whole being feels the palpable presence of God. But it's not a physical place. It's more of a place where your soul can perceive a certain clarity and closeness with God. There was a guy in high school I casually knew. I'll call him Tommy Callahan. We were both on the swim team. 
And one afternoon, while walking to practice, he asked me what I wanted to do in my career. My response was focused on college, but from there on, I was pretty open. I followed up with him with the same query. He responded he wanted to go to college, but after that, he was interested in going in the seminary. Now at that time, that was not a typical expected response. So I summed up all the eloquence that I could think of in my 17-year-old brain and responded, oh. <laughs> After thinking about it, thinking about my response for a few more steps, I thought I'd add to that response by responding, good. <laughs> then I quickly changed the direction of the discussion to the type of workout we were going to have and expect that day. Tommy and I never discussed it again. We went our separate ways after high school. I've thought about that response a number of times over the past 30 years. I've thought that maybe I underperformed. <laughs> maybe I was given the chance to be part of God's plan to encourage Tommy with his vision. Was Tommy reaching out to me for validation? Could a better response have, give, have given Tommy that extra support he needed for such a decision? I don't know. I was in the seminary, perhaps five years ago, in the sacristy, putting on my alb, and, all of, and, and of all people, in walks Tommy Callahan. I called out his name, and he remembered me instantly 30 years later. I learned that he was in his second year at the seminary at the age of 54. I asked him whether he pursued any part of the seminary right after college, and he told me he did not. He reflected that even though he heard the call and felt the ever-presence of God, that thin veil or that thin space, he passed on the opportunity, the call. Unfortunately, he told me he had spent the last 30 years trying to find that thin space somewhere else again. He thought he would have had more chances that the door would simply have stayed open for him to walk through at any time. I recounted for him that I felt like I failed him when he mentioned the seminary to me. He waved it off and said, if that did impact my decision to not enter the seminary, it was just one small part of a big puzzle. It certainly wasn't definitive. I was thinking about the puzzle pieces and the moments in time when something was clearly asked of me Someone, sometime when you know this is important. This is something that deserves my complete attention. Those times, opportunities, God hands us when he wants us to step up. Mostly when we know that we are called to act, to drop our net and to answer that call made clear through God's thin veil. Tommy left the seminary at the end of the year. He told me later, when called to act, God wants us to act. He had missed the opportunity. He was afraid to drop his net and follow. In hindsight, with all of us looking with 2,000 years hindsight later, with the perspective of the entire church history behind us, it's very easy to say what a clear decision it was for the apostles to follow Jesus and make that choice. I bet in actuality, it was difficult. It required courage, a sense of purposeful direction to follow this leader who said he was the son of God, the Messiah. In truth, I don't know if I would have dropped my net to follow him at that time. The opportunity would have been lost. The good news is that God keeps opening doors through the thin veil. I'm determined not to miss the next one.
and let us stand in prayer. Lord God, Isaiah reminded us in that first reading that people live in darkness and they need the light. For those in our day and age who live in darkness, especially mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, we pray for them, Lord, and ask that you bring some light into their lives, light of hope or of forgiveness, of comfort, or of purpose, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, Paul wrote to the Corinthians that there should not be division among the people. And Lord, we live in a day and age as most people, and for most of the history of mankind, where we're divided, one religion against another. And even within Christianity, this Protestant group, this Catholic group, this traditional group, this liberal group, Muslims, Jews. Lord, we're supposed to be united. Everybody is seeking to know who you are, our God. And each man or woman, each person, is responsible for responding as only they can. We cannot live their faith, they cannot live ours. So may we learn to respect each other and not reject one another saying that their beliefs are foolish or absurd, that each one has their own value, and they're all trying to do what we're trying to do, responding to you. And so we pray to the Lord. Lord. And if anybody else has any special prayer, please let us know, and then we can make it our own as well. Special intention, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Theo and Luis that uh, Lewis, sorry, Theo and Lewis that are being baptized today, uh, that the great light of baptism will shine forever in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. <laughs> Pray to the Lord. <laughs> and guess who the Bengals are praying for? <laughs> to the same God. <laughs> any other prayers? Any intentions? Okay. Lo Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, for those people who still are surviving from the blizzard, surviving the loss of their loved ones, surviving literal medical, physical problems that will be a part of their life maybe for the rest of their lives, but in gratitude for the doctors, the nurses, the responders, for all the emergency people, and for those neighbors who had an open heart and an open door to take in the strangers, in gratitude and in hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And so, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for speaking to us through the scriptures, for talking to us and revealing yourself to us and who we are and can be through the homily, through the music that lifts our souls. And so that, Lord, as you have spoken to us and we have responded to you with our prayers in our hearts, we thank you, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing 940, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, number 940 in your books. We need Salvador and um, uh, Sophia and Kylie to come on up and do the collections. You satisfy the hungry heart with care. Sweet, come give to us, O oh, oh, saving Lord, a breath of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. Oh, saving Lord, the bread. 
With joyful lips we sing to you Our praise and gratitude That you should count us worthy, Lord To share this heavenly food You, you satisfy the hungry heart finest wheat, come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. And if the Lord has given us so many gifts, including bread and wine, let us pray now in return with signs and words of gratitude, what we give back to the Lord will be found acceptable. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may truly profit us for eternal salvation. This we ask through Jesus, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty, our salvation always, everywhere, even under the most difficult circumstances, to give you praise and thanks, most loving God. For in you we live and move and have our very being. And while in this body we do not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess that pledge of life eternal. And so, having received the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we also hope for an everlasting share in that mystery of Easter, life, death, and resurrection, our own as well. And this we now pray as we join our hearts, our voices, with one another here, at home, and people throughout the world on this day of worship, but also with the angels and saints as we sing these words. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Bless is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to everything, and you have made everything holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a perfect sacrifice may be made to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you this morning by that same Holy Spirit, now graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration so that they may become for us the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread. He said the blessing. He gave you thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And then in a similar manner, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving thanks, gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. <clears throat> Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. And therefore, Lord, as we truly celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, his ascension to your right hand, and as we look forward to his second coming at the end of time, here and now, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon this oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death has reconciled all of us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the very body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one united spirit in Christ. May he make of each and every one of us today an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with all of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with her spouse, Joseph, with the apostles, with the glorious martyrs, who gave up their lives rather than give up their faith. For all the saints on whose constant intercession and prayer we do rely for unfailing help. And so, Lord, may this reconciliation, we pray, advance peace and salvation throughout the whole world. Be pleased to use Francis, our Pope, Mike, our Bishop, the women and the men who are leaders of all religions, churches, and denominations, May they continue to be your instruments of justice, of peace, love, and unity in a world you created for everyone, not just for us. And therefore, we are grateful that you have listened graciously to the prayers that so far we have given to you this morning. But we know you will continue to listen as we pray throughout this rest of the day. Because you are a merciful God, and we know that you gather to yourself all of your children who are scattered throughout the world, especially immigrants, refugees, and also asylum seekers. For our departed relatives and friends, we remember in a very special and personal way because they were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. May you give them kind admittance into your eternal kingdom. And in a special way, we remember Christopher Andrews. Then, Lord, we want to be remembered too, because we have that same hope that they had, that hope to share in the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen. And now we unite ourselves in prayer, not only with one another here, not only for those of you who are at home, but also our relatives and friends who cannot be with us physically this day, but are united with us in this same prayer as we pray to their and our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your followers, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. And Lord, we, your followers, in this day and age, look for that same gift. And we pray, Lord, that therefore you consider not so much our sin, but more importantly, our faith, so we could share peace and unity here with one another, with others the rest of this weekend, and then one day with you in heaven forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord's peace, may his joy be with all of you. And with your spirit.
let us offer each other a sign in prayer for peace. Peace, man. Good morning. Peace. God bless. Peace. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say, but didn't you take a shower today? <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> Peace. God bless. I have a happy day today. God bless. Have fun today. Yeah. Peace. God bless. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are all of us, now called to join in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we come to the altar for communion, please join in singing hymn number 945 in your books, I Am the Bread of Life, number 945. <clears throat>
We're finishing our new year registration and re-registration process. Please fill out one of the forms at the entrances or fill out a virtual form on our website. Thank you. Our senior group is looking to help any of our friends who aren't able to join us here at the Newman Center. To arrange for communion to be brought to someone or to arrange for a friendly <laughs> phone call or handwritten note, please contact Al Potler. Al, you want to raise your hand? There he is. We are here for you. RCIA classes begin this Tuesday, January 24th at 5.30 p.m. If you're an adult who wants to receive the Sacrament of Confirmation, please contact Leah as soon as you can. And uh, by adult, we mean anybody 18 years of age or older. And it's not just confirmation. Yes. <clears throat> it's all the sacraments and just someone who might want to learn more about their faith. On Saturday, January 28th, we'll have our first Newman family morning. At 10 o'clock here at the Newman Center, we'll have story time and music for children ages newborn to five and coffee and donuts for their parents. Talk to Leah for more information or to sign up for our young family mailing list. And uh, Leah is listed in the bulletin, so you can either email her or call her. And her husband, Josh, is here, too, so he's in the doorway. Okay. <clears throat> Sandwich ministry re restarts this week on Monday, January 30th at 5 p.m. Student masses begin next Sunday, January 29th at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday night dinners also begin next week on February 1st at 6 p.m. And I'm going to throw in for any Asian, Chinese, Asian people, Happy New Year. Today's their New Year. Amen. So as we said, um, RCIA will be for baptism, any, uh, from baptism up. Um, so it could be confirmation, it could be baptism, and, and uh, of course the other ones, the sacraments in there too, that's, uh, that's there. Second thing is that Al Potler's phone number is in the bulletin. So if you need to contact him, you can do that through there. All right, thank you. And last. How many here are able to, either with the use of the app or YouTube, watch Chosen? Okay, a few. I, I just was thinking about it because of the gospel today and how Christ chose the different apostles. And, and then as Mike said, well, what was the reaction? And they had to leave their family, their job, and everything. Give yourself a gift. It's called Chosen. The Chosen. The cho well, The Chosen, yeah. And the fact is, it, it gives a beautiful insight, a very human insight into Christ, into his times, into the first episode with Mary Magdalene, you know, with, with all the different, you know, individuals, and makes them real, not just a saint with a halo around their head. The struggles, the doubts, the fears, the hesitations, but also the dedication. So give yourself a gift. The chosen, either with the app, or, you know, on YouTube. It's also, it's also on Netflix and Amazon Prime. Okay, Netflix and Amazon Prime. TikTok? <laughs> I was going to say, they're really searching. <laughs> Okay, if you have a smart TV, then you can use the Angel app. Well, we got all the, and in fact, even every once in a while, they'll show the recent one at a regular movie theater. But, you know, I get the first few, you know, episodes. I think it's, this is the third year. So, you know, you have a lot to catch up on. Anyway, and finally, just a wonderful thank you to our musicians, our music. Uh, and, and, As I told you before, I would be so lost being in a place where there is no music. Music is so essential to worship for our hearts, our souls, you know, and to give praise to God. So again, thank you. And now let us stand in prayer. Grant, Almighty God, we pray that 
receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, that we may always glory in all the gifts that you give us. This we pray in your name, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you. May God continue to bless us and many through us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing 775, Go Make a Difference, number 775. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the salt of the earth, called to let the people see the love of God in you and me. We are the light of the world, not to be hidden but be seen. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the hands of Christ reaching out to those in need. The face of God for all to see. We are the spirit of hope. We are the voice of peace. Make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world.